Hey there, Julian from Memberstack here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do something that pretty much every app needs in some way, shape, or form, and that is allowing your members to create items in your database and then getting those items. So one example of when you need to do this is for something like a to-do app. Your members need to be able to create items to do, and then you need to be able to get those items to show back to them. Another example for something public would be like a social media platform. You have your users, that need to make posts, and then you need to show those posts on their profile. So in this example, I'm gonna be using Supabase because it's what I am most familiar with, but the logic should be pretty much the same whether you're using Supabase, Xano, Firebase, or you know anything else. So that's about it. Now let me show you what we already have set up so that you know you're not behind. Here, all we have is a very basic you know Webflow page. This is all that's going on. We have sign up with Wisden member stack working already. I'm not going to go over that in this video because we have a few other videos that talk about that. So we have that and we have our items here that we're going to use to interact with Wisd. We have this form with this input in it. And since Wisd is going to be using these, we have Wisd attributes on them. So Wisd M underscore form and M underscore input. And then on here we have M item and M name. And Anything that's interacting with Wiz needs to have Wiz attributes, if you didn't know, because otherwise Wiz just simply doesn't know what to do with it. So that is all that we have over here in Webflow. We have a member stack app that is super basic. Nothing crazy is going on over here. We have a Wiz app and we do have Supabase connected and member stack connected, which are all simple things to connect. And we have our empty Supabase database. So that is it. Now let's get into making this happen. And the first thing that we need to do is actually have the members that are signing up in MemberStack go into Supabase. And there are a few ways to do this. I'm going to do it directly through Wizd. We have another video of syncing up uh, Supabase and MemberStack using serverless functions. This is a much less complicated method. Um, and it's what I would, for the most part, recommend you doing. So Anyways, let's do that now. And before we have it going into Supabase, we need to actually define where it's gonna go. So here we are in our table editor in Supabase, and we need to make a new table. What we're gonna do here is make a table called members, and we're gonna make sure we've got everything we need. So ID, leave this as being called ID, but for the type, you're gonna wanna change it to text. Just, it's a little more flexible. Then click add column, and in this case, we're going to do email. You're probably going to want to save your email here too. And again, select text, leave that as is, don't change anything else. If you have custom fields, obviously add those in, but I don't. So let's hit save. And then the next thing that we're going to want to do is make the table for our items to be stored. So now that we have this, we are good to go. And then let's go ahead and make our items tables. So Let's hit new table and right here in name, let's call it items. And then we have ID. Let's go ahead and leave this as is so that each one has a unique ID being passed through. Created at, that is good. And then we need to do member ID. And this is gonna be text and it's actually gonna reference the member ID in the members table, which I'll show you in a sec. Then we need to have name. So let's enter that in. Again, select text and then add foreign key relation we are going to want to reference our members table and we are going to map member ID to ID in member. Then this here, action if reference row is updated and, and removed, this is saying, what do you want to happen when one of the members is messed with? So updated. This means if let's say the ID of the member was changed, what do we want to happen? I'd say cascade it. We want that to also happen in their items. Then if it's removed, what do we want to happen? I would say cascade. So if the member's deleted, then we also want to delete the items associated with them. But your use case might be different. You might not need that. So anyways, let's go ahead and hit save. This is all looking as it should. This needs to be set to a primary key so that it can be searchable. And that is it. So now let's go ahead and hit save. And now let's head back into Wizd. So. The first thing that we need to do here is, like we said, get our members being sent into Supabase. So we do already have an action for signing them up. 
we just want to pass them into Supabase. So let's go ahead and make a new request here. And let's just call it SB add member. And then for our app, we're going to want to select Supabase. We want to create an item in our members table. And then we want to map the following. So the ID of the member should be, sorry, return. And then we want to get this ID that's passed through from MS signup. So just like that, hit that. As we can see, beautiful. Then we want to pass through their email, return, auth email, just like that. Check, all is good. SB add member, absolutely beautiful. There we go. And we have this request, so we've defined how we want data to be sent. We haven't defined when we want it to be sent. So for that, let's go into actions. And then we can see that, that we already have this sign up stuff. And now we want to do SB add member again. For type, we're going to do event because we want to trigger this when the request finishes, specifically the NS signup request. What do we want to do? We want to perform another request, SB add member. And let's go ahead and hit close on that, open our data store, and then keep an eye on these. So let's go ahead and just do some new member. That's loading. And then this loaded. So as we can see, a member is being created. Now, if we go over here into Supabase in our members table, we can see that member has been created. Beautiful. Next, we need to deal with the items. So here we are again in WISD. And first things first, let's go ahead and send a request. So actually, before we do that, we need to have the member's ID on hand. So what we're going to do for that is create another request and another action. Let's just call this MS get member. And this is something that pretty much any app using member stack should should have. Do that and then do get member. And now let's go ahead and create an action. And again, let's call it MS get member type event. We want to do when the page starts loading we want to perform the request of get member. And this is basically just gonna check with member stack, say who's logged in right now, and here's their data. So that's super valuable. We have that. Now let's go ahead and just hit refresh, check our data store here. And as we can see, MS get member is working. We have all of this stuff. So now let's set up our request and let's call this SB create item. And then for our app, we are going to want to do super base, of course, and we are going to want to naturally create an item. For a table, we want to do that items table we created. For our data, we want to pass through the member ID, and we want to get that from the get member request. So right over here, we have member ID. Just like that, we want to pass that through. Then we want to pass through the name. So let's go ahead and do that. Return the value of this input right here, which is M input. So there we go. That should be it for the request. Now we need to do the action. So again, let's do SB create item. And we're going to want to select element this time. And for that, we'll do M underscore form. So when this form on event, which event is submitted. So we're going to select submit. We want to prevent the default. So it's not going to submit like a Webflow form. And we want to reset the values. Then we want to perform a request. And the request in question is SB create item. So let's go ahead and try that out right now. Everything should be working as it is supposed to. So let's go ahead and type in here cool beans and hit create item. As we can see that loaded and as we can see cool beans has been created just to make sure let's go ahead and go into Supabase and check right there and look at that we have cool beans so we're already creating these items now let's go back over into WISD and let's go ahead and actually get those items so again let's do a request here to get the items so let's do sb underscore get items app, we're going to want to do super base. And for method, we are going to want to do get list, I believe. Yes, get list. Table, we're going to want to do items, count results, filter type, and okay, that's fine. For column, 
we're going to want to do member ID equals return our member ID just like that. And this is basically saying only give us back the items that have this member ID, which is the member who's currently logged in. So that is perfect. Now, which ones do we want to return? Which columns do we want to return? I think we only want to return name because that's all we're displaying. So do that. But if you want to, for example, you have image, name, description, blah, 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 blah. You would enter that in here. You click add and you'd enter those different uh, columns. So now we have that. Now let's go ahead and actually trigger that. So again, SB underscore at, sorry, get items. And then we're going to want to do event request finishes after get member is done, just because, you know, we can't run it at the same time when we don't have their member ID yet. So when that's done, we want to perform the request of get items. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and just keep an eye on our data store and refresh. As we can see, get items is being done and the correct item is being gotten, which is absolutely awesome. So now what we need to do is actually render this. So first things first, let's keep our data store open here and let's create a new variable for the index. So for this, let's go ahead and give it a name of I for index and set the initial value of zero. That is it. Let's go ahead and click, sorry, return zero, my bad. Still getting the hang of this. Um, return zero, there we go. Beautiful, it is returning zero. So we are good to go on that front. Now let's go ahead and do another action here. So what we're gonna do is let's call it list items and we are going to want to do element we're going to want to apply it to m item then for this we're going to want to do render list and it's saying render list from array which array so let's return the array return we're going to want to get this from our get items and we need to find the array and an array is just a list of items and you can tell it's an array because of this square bracket over here just like that so let's click that and see as we can see cool beans is being passed through when we do variable for index we're going to want to do vi just like that and now it's working so i'm going to go ahead and create another item just so you can see and let's call this less cool beans and let's hit create item now if i go ahead and refresh then as we can see there's two items and just so you can really see let's just call it promo because why not and then we refresh as we can see there are three items but it just says item name so let's go ahead and make that work now again we need an action let's just call this list set name and we're going to want to do element again for our attribute we're going to want to do m name and we want to do set text plain text value return and then as we can see here from this get items there is get items data the zero thing name this is determining which one so all we need to do is get rid of that zero and grab our vi right there and as we can see that is working now so if we refresh let's see what exactly is going to happen now we have cool beans less cool beans and promo so that is it everything is now working exactly as it should Hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.